Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and welcome to Weird Things on the Deep Web. Now, it's been a while since I recorded this last time, but you know what? Sometimes I needed time for this to brew over, whether that takes weeks, months, maybe years. As long as I'm not sitting there covering six websites of Agent 47 cosplayers going, All right, boys, uh, I, I'll do I'll do whatever scary job you want for only five th $5. You know, and it turns out to be a federal honeypot, okay? Th that's not really a fun video, okay? It's just... That's just deep web TikTok, and we're not about TikTok on this channel. We're about good old fashioned memes and 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 just having a good time, ladies and gentlemen. This is weird things on the deep web. I believe this time I have a sufficient amount of creepy, weird, funny things to show you. So sit back, relax, grab a cold one, and you know have a good old time because we're about to join the fancy schmancy world of the dark web. I don't know why I do this with my neck. All right. <laughs> It, it kind of hurts after a while, but you know, it's, it's a tick, I guess, right? All things are made whole in the metaverse. You know, it's been a metaverse is a meme at this point, but you know, I'm all for it, okay? Omnia senantur ascendere debes, all right? Ascend, 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 ascend. I don't know what's up with the little purple thing going on over here, but it is made with a site known as Card. Okay, so I guess that's the framework they picked. Now, I don't know who this character is up here, but they seem like a pretty cool individual. Let's go to the goal of the metaverse. Mm, ooh, okay, a little, a little blown up the picture there. We aim for a better world without sin or punishment. <laughs> Isn't that like the Jewish religion, though? Don't you guys have like... Oh, wait, no, Jews are like... they don't. You guys don't have a hell, right? I might be completely wrong on that. Hold on. But, uh, yeah, what do they mean, like, without sin or punishment? Do you just, like... Do you, do you like completely get rid of the ability to do sin or punish or punishments, or do you just take sin in and be like, ah, that's a human experience, call it a day? I don't know, I don't know. But for a site all about getting a little Christy about it, um, we'll find out. All who join the metaverse of the internet shall hide behind a virtual mask, disguising as none of their real self. So an anonymity. I can sign on with the anonymity. That's pretty poggy indeed. Okay. Our Lord and Savior. Ah, let's get down to business. Algebra Guy has been the first member of the Church of the Metaverse and has ascended to a higher level. You can ascend like him. Join or perish. This is where we're going to get a little Christy, I guess, you know? It's like, join us or God shall smite ye from the face of the earth, young one. I see how it is. Let's go to Algebra Guy. I don't know who this guy is, but we're just going to like do a copy on him. Open up a little furry fox tab, if you will, and just see if, like, who who is this, all right? And this takes us to... What's a tutoring site? No way! No way, it's a little tutoring section. Okay, wait, algebra? Oh my god, it's like... It's so lovingly 90s. All right, let's go to a video, I guess. Uh, let's see, probability. That seems kind of... Oh, Vimeo, okay. All right, so they got, like, a Vimeo section? Combinations. Math is power for you with 200,000 subscribers. Okay, it's pretty like popping channel, dude. I like it. So they got 150,000 views, and I'm pretty sure it's just like, you know, Khan Academy. Like, I would click on this if I needed to learn something in stats real quick. So let's open up the channel and stop it. Whoa, dude, this guy's been uploading like a madman 10 hours ago, 10 hours ago, 11 minutes ago. Linear transformation. Which vectors are in. Wow. Wow! It, it, oh, it's like it's like a bot. It, it, I, I feel I feel like I've come across like what appears to be like a bot or something. You know, it's just, it's just like a bot channel. Like they just upload like four minute clips of math information. Kind of cool. Let's get back out of here, okay? Cool. Join the metaverse. Become one with the metaverse. Oh, they got a little YouTube page. Let's click on that. Alge Algebra guy. <laughs> okay. Uh, what is this made? Ascend to a higher being, November 1st, 2021. What the fuck? <laughs> it's like, it's like, a, it's like YouTube shorts. It's like, you're, you're forget Let's click on that one. This is just weird. This is just weird. This is the Roblox horror song. Ah, it all comes back to Roblox, dude. The Roblox. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, wait, is every video like that? It's just like a random generic image. So you're saying, just say, okay, I can't even try it. Morse code. All right, let's, let's translate the Morse code, I guess. Maybe, maybe, maybe that'll answer the question. 
Okay, let's translate the Morse code up. You can hide from your own actions. You will die for that. Okay. I'm kind of creeped out. <laughs> I mean, I'll be honest here. I didn't expect an algebra situation to go like this two weeks ago. Let's it's just algebra. It's just algebra guy making weird Morse code. I'm not translating that. It's a little too much. But yeah, that's uh okay. Uh, weird. So yeah, that's uh it's that's I guess algebra guy in the metaverse. It's what appears to be a very like virgin brand new arg. So yeah, you know what I've learned, ladies and gentlemen? I've learned that giving the internet to anybody is both a blessing and a curse because sometimes you come across some absolutely weird stuff. I'm sure in like a year this will ferment, you'll see it on the horror channels, but you saw it on some ordinary gamers first and that matters, kind of. Let's back out and go somewhere that's a bit more comprehensible. Cyberpunk 2077 source code leaked. Oh boy. You know when you you know like where you call out the perfect like sort of scam, you know like <laughs> this is this is what you shouldn't give your money to. Cyberpunk source code leaked. In February 2021, CD Project servers have been hacked and Cyberpunk 2077 core source code has been stolen. Studio confirmed the attack on their network. The company also shared a ransom note from the hackers. The developer said it had no intentions of negotiating with the attackers and source codes for Cyberpunk 2077 was later sold reportedly through a dark web auction. The starting bid was reportedly set at $1 million, but the source code was also open for immediate selling for $7 million. Finally, the source code has been sold for $20 million. Actually, I want to know, like, is there is there any actual, like, pr sauce on this? Let me see. Cyberpunk source code sold. And, uh, apparently they sold it, yeah, so $1 to $7 million, and I guess, where's the $20 million, though? Uh, because a satisfying offer was received from the will not be sold again or to, if truth suggests the buyer is either keen not to have to do because they're a supporter of the company or they want to keep it for themselves for malicious reasons. So maybe they did sell it for like 20 million. I don't know. There's no like proper confirmation on it. But anyways, you can look at the news and here they've got the end of business, October 30th, okay? So we are the only dark web vendor still selling the source code. Other stores have been closed by law enforcement and all files destroyed. It's a matter of time they will cease us too. Don't miss your opportunity to learn how to make fantastic video games from professionals. I wonder, like, w w you can't just read, w you, you think the source code's gonna answer it? What's the source code gonna show? Traffic system unfinished, it's all commented out. To avoid arrest, we're closing this business within days and the source code, within days, October 30th. Currently, it's like, it's it, we're, we're in like, we're in, well, we're in the beginning of like, what, November? Yeah, there. This wasn't ever happening. Okay, it's a it's a scam. It's it's all nonsense. You know, you know how many dipshits fell for this? Cause that's such a low amount too. Like zero point zero zero one BTC is like what? Zero point zero zero, and that like by today's standards, after the crash, to USD forty eight dollars is what people are gonna fucking fall for. So you give them forty eight buckaroonies, and they're gonna actually give you the source code. Get at, if that existed, do you understand how like flooded the torrent sites would be with the cyberpunk source code? People would be downloading it left and right. This is a joke, all right? And you know the wildest thing is people who are savvy enough to get onto the dark web should also be smart enough to not fall for this. The fact that they've even sold some copies or at least claimed to sell, sold a thousand of these, you're insane. You people are, like, this is, you're an idiot, okay? I'm just saying, it, it's as nice as I can put it. Special offer for first 100 customers. Get your copy as low as 0 0.1 BTC. That's still too low. Now, if you go to the add cart section, I believe they may even give you, like, a, uh, like, if, if they get, oh, no, wait, here it is. Here's the code, okay. One, okay, so let's grab this, and let's just see what the blockchain, let's see if they, how much money they actually earned off of this hustle. It has received a total of three dollars in a sense. It's a, they only made three bucks off of this. Oh, oh, thank you, Christ! Oh my God! 
They're not, thankfully, it's not a functional scam. Jesus. They, they haven't made anything off of it. Okay, let me go to block chair real quick. I just need to make sure, I need to make sure, okay? I need to make sure it's $3 and not like $3,000. Because if it, that'll really separate, that'll really change me, okay? All right, here we go. Bitcoin. Yeah, only three bucks and 66 cents. Get screwed, buckos. You didn't make a $40 yet amount. Get out of here, losers. This person literally lost and pretended they sold it to themselves. <laughs> Their buddy came by and bought the lemonade because they felt too bad. <laughs> Get out of here. Oh, I, love, I love it when a scam fails. Mm. Unless it's like a regenerated address. Please don't tell me that's a regenerated address. Don't tell me it's a regenerated. Ah, it's not a regenerated address. Okay. All right, it's good. So yeah, guys, sometimes you come onto the deep web and you find, like, absolute losers. You find absolute idiots running scams and they don't work. And that's what makes me happy. So let's go off to somewhere cooler. Technology Tech Learning Collective. Ooh, a little tech learning action? Looking to get certified? Look elsewhere. Looking to spark a revolution? We'll show you how to become more powerful than the most well-funded adversaries, including corporate and government-backed opponents. So it sounds very, uh, very, like, very anti-establishment okay let's go let's go figure this out so here you can choose to sub not going to sub right now militantly reject corporate monopolies all right with a with a with a subtitle like that of course i'm going to click on it come on now the skills we teach do make individuals more likely to get hired <coughs> in technology sector jobs and numerous students have successfully switched careers to become programmers or site reliability engineers, SREs, without any prior background in or experience with the software and internet industries. This is partly thanks to our superior pedagogy. Pega pedagogy? What the? <laughs> That's new. I want to read about pedagogy. It's an apprentice-based technology school for radical organizers founded in New York City that provides a security-first IT infrastructure curriculum to otherwise underserved communities and organizations advancing social justice causes. We train politically self-motivated individuals in the arts of hypermedia, information technology, and radical political practice. Founded by an operator exclusive by radical queer and femme technologists, we offer unparalleled free by donation and low cost computer classes on topics ranging from fundamental computer literacy to the same offensive computer hacking techniques used by national intelligence agencies and military powers cyber armies that's uh that's kind of cool <laughs> not sure if I, I mean you know they say like knowledge is power and everything but like damn they're they're really out there to like they're really out there to make some make some wild ones, you know? So they have two primary goals, provide meaningful technology education to underserved communities. Hey, that that's also that's that's pretty important. I feel like when it comes to technology, it's it's a really classist thing, right? Like you have to you have to have like a certain amount of money or you have to have like a certain background in order to have like access to the best. And in a world where technology is like basically a basic requirement to function, I feel like everyone should have access to to the same to at least like a same base set and at least like be on the same st standard. You know, like back in the day, um, when I was like a kid, I guess like computer programming wasn't like the entire rage. I mean, for adults, yeah, but like uh, back in the day, it was like it, when I was growing up. We would literally be told, like, there's three jobs, beta. You can be a doctor, a lawyer, or an engineer, okay? But now it's like there's a fourth job, and it's basically anything to do with computers. And it feels like that's sort of the, the most stable job, if you will, because now it's like computers have branched into a billion things. It's like you can be a software programmer. The world of artificial intelligence is all the way there. I've got friends who are working in, like, the, the 3D, like, filming space right now with, like, virtual reality and, like, Unreal Engine. Like, totally interesting fields, and they're all related to computers. But I feel like for a lot of people who want to make something of their life, this is an avenue you want to go down in, and unfortunately, it's like... You got to have access to, like, the money to get some of these, like, th you know what I mean? Like, it's all just a giant feel. So I feel like this is a cool thing. But uh, anyways, let's back out of here, okay? Let's let's go see let's go see some more stuff. Imagining an optimistic cyber future. Ah, okay. Let's see a cyber future. Does it got a little farm action going here? What is this? America's first sustainable urban agrihood is growing in Detroit. Ah, this is 
Oh, this is this is a Detroit little urban farm. Kind of cool, cool. Mastering most things humans do requires lifetimes of practices. Woodworking, gardening, and painting are just a few crafts whose history stretch back thousands of years. But modern telecommunications, the act of communicating near instantaneously with somebody from afar is different. Its history is so short that there is relatively little of it. The very first electric telegraph is not even 200 years old. The first telephone patent was granted in 1876 and the World Wide Web was invented in 1989, a mere 32 years ago. Yeah, I mean, computers are a brand new thing. You gotta understand, like, when I was a kid, I was, like, maybe the second generation walking into, like, computers, you know what I mean? Like, we were, like, the second gen. The first gen were, like, sitting in the Cray supercomputers or back when they had, like, you know, the really old, old computers, the really old stuff, test tube stuff. Now we've got, you know, computers are relatively young, and they're advancing so fast that we're by passing tons of laws that we once set. Cyberspace infancy partially explains its volatility. For the last half century, computing power made at least three great migration. It started at specialized isolated campuses. The early lonely mainframes were like stars in a mostly empty sky. Then came the personal computer of the 80s. And now we've got the cloud. So social media and its role in society. What a civilization, if not knowledge, con concre concretized into the physical world around us. Homes have running water because of piping first laid years ago. We call this plumbing. But plumbing, man, stop being so condescending. But plumbing is an activity only possible because of thousands of years spent refining the practice of moving spot water from one spot to the other. Okay, so the social media of today, which stimulates an imminent need for human connection, but is never meant to fulfill it, the social media of our optimistic cyber future will fulfill existing needs for a human connection, but will not be designed to stimulate a need for more. Imagine no more notifications pressuring you into meaningless interactions, no more happy birthday reminders from people you friended decades ago and haven't talked to since. I got a simple, just delete Facebook. I know exactly what you're talking about. Delete Facebook, call it a day. The rise and fall of techno-feudalism. As the internet embeds itself into more elements of daily life, more people recognize that the gap between state and corporation is closing. Ooh, the global economy has already become increasingly codependent, with multinationals who are amassing state-like powers and developing bureaucratic governing structures. Critical government's functions already rely on corporate operators who are increasingly defining the same government policies they operationalize. This is an incredibly depressing page, because it, it's so true, like, you know the world of Cyberpunk 2077 and everything? Like, that entire, the, the world of Deus Ex is slowly becoming a reality. I mean, let's be completely real over here. Corporations, are right, especially big tech companies like Facebook and whatnot, they're getting way more power than they probably should. And we've probably spent years talking about how to break up Facebook, but at this point, I don't even think breaking up any of these big tech companies is possible. You can't break up... You can't break up Apple, you can't break up Google, Facebook, Tesla, SpaceX, whatever companies that exist in this sphere because they're just that big. They literally control the infrastructure on how we communicate. If you're going to break them up and they something they, they if if any of these companies go offline, like could you imagine if like Amazon web services like their cloud component ever dies or goes down? We're looking at like an internet crash, okay, that needs to be rectified immediately. How many services are tied to just one tech company is absolutely mind-bogglingly st staggering. But it is what it is. And I mean, the more power, th the more they become established, the more power they have. And it is what it is. You can see exactly what they want to do. So by them creating free software, lowering the financial costs, creating engagement and traffic, then creating the courses, workshops you pay hundreds of bucks for, then they go to the alumni community and hyper local, hyper local. What? <laughs> Is that more local than local? <laughs> okay. Political impact, grassroots and social change. And that will also lead back into free software. Really interesting path but that's that's how they want to do it that's how they want to go and do it so yeah that's the tech learning collective okay i think i spent way too much time on this uh it's truly about changing the world through the power of teaching people about computers everybody and it's run by uh, a group of very talented individuals as they so claim okay it is a r technology education for radical organizers and revolutionary communities truly the keyboard warriors of tomorrow Ooh, gun gun! I think we found an ARG, buckos. I think we found an ARG here, ladies and gentlemen. This is gun gun. 
And uh, first things first, let me just do the cool thing and like dark theme. There you go. Gun Gun. All right. So Gun Gun, 111 subscribers. Pretty unknown arg, it seems. Let's go to the about section. I'm new to computers. Been learning how to use this stuff since my happy birthday. With her help. I'm learning and they're from the United Kingdom so they were found in 2018 so this is kind of flown under the radar if you will and if you look into the video section over here they've got a fair amount of videos they've got welcome home change your life today learn helplessness slideshow reeducate let's let's watch the first one real quick hello followers I am goon the key fellow -er. Her has suggested tooling social media to extend truth to all followers. I am 15. I've long forgotten my material age. I can speak, but as followers choose not to, to connect to our roots. I'm truly known as a friendly and considerate key fellower. In time, if you allow yourself to, you will come to understand truth. This is fucking weird, dude. This is like really weird, man. Feel free to communicate with me through Twitter, as I'm often awake. Search. All right. Uh, <laughs> it's too dark for this, man. I'm sorry. I'm I'm kind of getting a little weirded out tonight. This is so creepy. I love it. I'm 15, and I forgot my material age. So. Am I speaking to an AI or what is his gun gun? So they've got a recruitment page over here. Let's look at the recruitment page and let's see what it is. So it's a followers at a Wix site, the followers. So, ah, dude, you know what that image is? That's like the, that's like the man that everyone sees in their dreams. So, huh? Okay. So here it is. Become a follower. So full name, email address. We need your assistance. Have you seen our precious gun? I have seen your precious gun. He's on, he's on the YouTube channel right here. In fact, you, oh, two years ago was our like last update. Okay. But yeah, here it is. So we've got more and more stuff. Let me actually see what their most popular video was, which is their first one. So they've got re-educate. It really is just an R, guys. I mean, it really is something of that nature. But uh, yeah, if we go down over here, they've been, wow, they've been really holding that up for, they've been really holding that up for like 20 fucking minutes, boys, 20, 25 minutes. So yeah, this is, uh, this is Gun Gun just making regular videos and their comment section is like, I'm sorry, followers, do not be taken aback by this video. While Gun struggles to overcome his peace trauma, he's subconsciously bending and then transmitting faulty echoes. This was not us followers intended video, nor can we take this video of Gun exercising down. Please send kind words of encouragement to Gun's way via Twitter. So, okay, it seems like Twitter is like their next, it seems like that's how you communicate. So it's, it's worth looking at, okay? So they're currently alive. Thank God. They're drowned, unfortunately. Uh, and they've joined 2018. So this is like a project that they've built, okay? And the most recent post they've had is threat. In order I'm older today, mystery revealed. I'm the mystery. I am Dustin. I am not sure who this me is. I will hold whoever me is close, reclaim the life which was taken from me. Only I will direct my gaze. And then they've got a shell. And the, and, the, and the little toy we saw from earlier in the video. And that has been destroyed. And then they've got one of these. You are Dustin. So that's where the story sort of ends. Dar, what is that? That is freaky as fuck. They got like that dude's face. He like drew that dude's face like it was Joker level. Oh, they broke the matrix. They're walking around their house. Is that a house or like a crack den? Oh my god! It's a crack den! I am where the sun is screaming, but I've been here for months. You can feel me at times, my presence. I felt your echo. Alright man, I'm getting really freaked out, dude. They're like switching voices around. Like acting like a little schoolgirl action. Oh uh, no! Uh. Different shot of them. Weird like Dutch 180 degree tilt camera angle. And I guess maybe they're like woodworking over there or making like another mannequin if I had to guess. 
that's pretty much it. I think this is too art house. I think that's it. This is like a really art house production, man. Like, it's gonna take me a lot longer than like just deep web browsing to figure it out. But basically the last several posts that this person made was all like upside down text, like basically really upside down emojis. I forgot to say that the radiant filth will more than likely connect to this account in time. It is strong, we ask that you be strong and united. These will be trying times for followers and followers alike. So, yeah, okay, cool. That's pretty much where the story ends. So yeah, this person made an ARG years ago. I guess it, like, was alive for a while, but it was so obscure that nobody really dug into it, except for, like, a couple hundred people. And it just sort of died and ended, okay? So, really, it's one of those ARGs that I would love to sit down one day. If you want me to actually sit down and, like, truly uncover the history of this, I would love to. That would be, like, super fun to uncover, like, ARGs that have sort of done their time and have been lost to time and have never been discovered. Well, really, until now. So let me know what you would think. This is uh, me, Mudar, and uh, we are going to go somewhere else. Oh no, dig deeper. Wake up, sheeple. We got a little bit of a... <laughs> we got dig deeper. I like looking at this graphic because it reminds me of like why this is the deep web. Why is it? So the reason it's the deep web is because we come across some of these fancy sites where it's run by somebody who's like... Guys, you have to look. They're, they're like they do. They do the Hunger Games thing where it's like Katniss. Look between the look between the barrier. That's where the point is. That's where the world shifts. But here it is. Okay, so welcome to dig deeper. And immediately as we start off with, they've got like donations, Clearnet pages, Tor pages, Freenet, I2P, Adam Feed, the Memorial Pillar. Don't tell me somebody died for this. That would be sad. Ninja's guide to the internet. All right, let me teach, let me let me learn let me learn from good old Ninja. There's probably hundreds of guides to internet privacy out there, and most of them are terrible. They recommend browsers from evil companies like Mozilla Firefox. Oh man, do I have to stop using Firefox, dude? No. Email provider that collects lots of your data, such as MailFence or Runbox. Glad I don't use any of that. Useless or malicious add-ons like Pri privacy badger or no script they kind of are a little useless <laughs> communication software that asks for your phone number like signal or to okay there's nothing i use signal stop it okay this guy this guy's like any any privacy software bad suspicious vpns like proton yeah anything just don't use a free one care too much about where a service is hosted instead of its policies or functionality okay so let's go down operating systems can't avoid talking about them since that's what all your software runs on in the first place obviously do not use windows <laughs> IVM it, man. It spies on almost everything you do and has auto updates that cannot be turned off in the home edition that's why you install the pro edition and just don't activate it okay you get everything but a watermark. <laughs> Apparently, some newer updates have allowed to be disabled some more of the spying, but that still doesn't salvage the system. Even if you disable all the telemetry, Windows still sends 11 unsolicited requests per minute. Oh, God. Linux has its own problems, too. Ubuntu has had spyware issues, and Systemd is pretty much an attempt at a takeover of Linux by big corporations. Oh, I, I'm not even going to get into the system D debate. It, it, we're not, we're not going to go there. All right. Web browsers. Briefly, most browsers don't care about your privacy or even are actively malicious. Many of them suffer from usability issues like no extension support, ungoogled Chromium or IceCat sends no unsolicited requests and support add-ons. However, they are dependent on the evil giants Google and Mozilla. Ugh. Big company equal bad. Mozilla equals the devil incarnate. Oh my. Yo, this person really don't like no goddamn Firefox. Damn, I haven't heard this slander since forever. <laughs> if you haven't been living under a rock for the last decade, then you will at least know Mozilla as a developer of the popular furry fox. Of course, if you've been reading this website a little, you'd guess that there is a darker story. Oh shit, there's an exposing going on. Woo, I like a little bit of I like a little bit of web browser drama, you know? Christ. So basically, what is it? Uh, just getting past a skin-deep veil of Mozilla's deception, you'll reveal a greedy, controlling, sneaky, deceptive, abusive, disempowering, double-speaking spawn of Satan. Oh, 
Yo, it's like, it's like Firefox fucked their mom. <laughs> okay, so history of Mozilla's anti-control. So they went back into history and looked at the setting menus of M Firefox 17. Ooh, guys, that is vintage. So here they've got Firefox 17, and this is like the original, like, I don't know what I'm supposed to be seeing over here. This is just like your standard thing. As we can see here, the trend has been to remove options. So less control for the user, contrary to the complaints of Mozilla. But these are pretty minor. Wait until you see the really vile things. Okay, so Firefox does not allow you to install unsigned extensions anymore. Okay, so that's a slippery slope and everything. I'm pretty sure they have like an advanced tab like a super advanced power user tab that they put all these options into but i could be wrong so here's mozilla's endgame this is their public image they're like a really nice anime character but they're really the evil anime character and then this is the laughing at your face so they've got chalky milk in the chalice of coom oh no mozilla's an evil company get out of here what is this don't mind me i just need an excuse to use these gifts and you know the saying a picture is worth a thousand words anyways what mozilla uh, why, why does mozilla do what they do and why do they pretend to be the opposite so let's see to understand we have to focus our attention on another video game deus ex invisible war a really good one by the way don't listen to grumpy deus oh <laughs> man's got the hottest takes of 20 21 <laughs> <It's> like <laughs> okay sure i mean deus ex invisible war isn't bad but i mean don't even try to compare it to the first game christ man the game had two factions you could do missions for the world trade organization the cold-hearted rule-loving government guys and the order of course, it's obvious that different kinds of players would ally themselves with whatever faction is closer to their beliefs. And then at the end of the game, it was revealed that both of these organizations were run by the same people. Yeah, thanks for not putting a fucking spoiler alert in there, Jesus. I suspect you realize where this is going. Mozilla is controlled opposition. In Deus Ex Invisible War, the Illuminati knew that, they, that many people would rebel against the WTO's rule. And so they had to create a good guy, the order to oppose the bad guy. This way they would direct the opposition where they wanted them and prevent the loss of control the exact same thing is happening here in the real world google apple microsoft are the bad guys and mozilla are the good guys <laughs> wow man Ooh, this one this one this one took a turn brother jesus the internet is a beautiful place, okay? It's the only place where you can read something about Mozilla Firefox and somehow on paragraph seven, they will, they will, they will create an allegory between Firefox and Chrome to Deus Ex Invisible War. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. You know what, if anything, this made me want to replay Deus Ex Invisible War. The description they gave is a million fucking times better than the actual game that has come out. I'm just putting it out there. But uh, yeah, all right, Jesus, where's Steam? All right, where, where's Steam at right now? Okay, where, where's the Steam sitting at? Hell yeah, brother, let's download it. Mm -mm. I agree. Uh, S. Stein. Warning, danger of criminal fines and imprisonment if you violate this law. Okay. <laughs> We're already starting off pretty strong here. States are not to be confused with traits such as schizophrenia. If problems arise if utilizing images of the deceased, Western medical practices destigmatize recognition of past lives as part of the broad spectrum of the personality matrix, self-recognition, reincarnation, Washington Criminal Code 9.56.010 against libel and defamation of the historical memory of the deceased U.S. figure is the living person Stein 2002 effectively pro protects the memory of the deceased u.s citizen boys we are we're kind of enter boys and girls we're entering like the wildest parts of the internet tonight jesus I need to mix more G Fuel in this coffee, dude. Code Sog, by the way. But uh, International Academic Research Credentials at Orchid. Nata a Pisa Italia Registrata a Gigliola Adini Cittadina Italiana nel 2002-2003. So it's all it's all Italian. Okay, let me let me let me just do a quick translation of this. Okay, Google Translate, please. This is like a little too much, man. I mean, I, I born in Pisa, Italy, registered in Giglio Adini, Italian citizen, started a project at a PhD level NIH in Ukraine against the anti-Semitism and the femicide of the Slavs.
Since 2004, s collaborated with the laboratory during the period we carry on mutual scientific investigations in the field of neuropsychology, ethnopsychology, psychophysiology, and neurophysiology. During this period of time in our ongoing collaboration, proved to be profoundly serious, erudite researcher, sincere, well-wishing, and a very energetic person. I'm glad to have uh, join our team again so that she can finish her research in human behavior with collaboration from our laboratory. Her presence will be welcomed, and we look forward to her informational lecture, presentations, educating our facility and students not just on our previous doctoral studies in strategic communication, communication research methods, business communications, and trend in U.S. media, we also look forward to her new doctoral expertise in communication apprehension, leadership coaching, and industrial and organizational psychology and quanti quant quantitative personality testing methodologies. So this is all the way back from like 2012, and this is from a university in the Ukraine. So you can see that the professor or like the PhD of biology, the chief, is Vladimir Pavlenko. And they've got more and more stuff that they've covered over here. Eth ethical relativism, while covering up crime and fraud through logical ethical arguments, is a result of a three-branch governing system that never anticipated audio and visual recordings documenting that the official leadership may put writing one thing, yet does not abide by what is written. For example, Rosehorse Grocery Food Chain Store at 14th Avenue in Spokane, Washington, might give the impression they provide respectable behavior in the proximity of physically handicapped customers. Yet in practice, might encourage bullying through abusive gestures such as cattle prodding? Most accountability requires a fourth element in the check and balance of governance, forensic mass media investigations, documentation, and reporting. Followers of the faith based on the Quran are prohibited from being the subject of photography and video recordings. What? That's not true at all. In what capacity? What? I don't know. I, I've never heard that one before, but okay. So I guess they try to talk about mass media surveillance and the connection they've had to like religious or ethical. Or, wow, this is this is a lot to really take in. Full spectrum of the leadership personality matrix, a proposal for institutionalizing personality background checks. That sounds so much close like a movie that I watched back in the day. You might have watched it too called Minority Report. I think it was a Tom Cruise movie, but the idea was is that like I they had like an AI that would like process everyone. And it would already identify who would be a criminal before they committed a crime. Kind of like, there's an anime actually called Psychopaths. Uh, I'm not a huge anime person, but this is a really good anime for those of you who are into like that cyberpunky shit. Where like basically they, it, it, they, they basically target individuals that have like a psychotic thing breaking off in their head. And like basically people that haven't committed crimes were about to commit crimes the system automatically tags and they hunt them down. Now, of course, it can be argued that the only reason they're about to commit a crime is because they're being so aggressively targeted. But uh, yeah, it's a whole anime right there and then. Internet's a weird place, man. I'm telling you. Internet's too weird. Let's back out of this, though. I'm getting scared. Today, uh, we've learned a lot on weird things from the deep web. I don't know how much I have to cut out or keep in, but we've come across Cyberpunk 2077's defunct scam of a source code nonsense. We've come across a, a school which has tuitions to teach people how to be, you know, radic ra radical political people in, in the computer space. I'm fried, okay? My, com my brain is gone. Honestly, we've come across args that have left my pickle pretty tickled. And, uh, you know, I, I really have to rewatch what we just did because the last hour felt like a fever dream and recording. So, yeah, I'm really going to ask you all what you thought about today's video. Uh, if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Just like if you dislike it. My brain is a little mush right now, so I'm going to... I'm going to go out for a little walk, you know, get some fresh air. And uh, when I come back, I'm really going to try to process what all went through. So, yeah, you'll see the finished product. I will see uh, my brain being turned into mush in real time. This is me, Mudahar. If you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike if you dislike it. I am out.